Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian from Darfrog World, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own fruit fly media. So the basic mix that I'm going to be mixing up today is going to be about an 18 to 20 cup mixture. Um, so it's going to consist of 12 cups of grinded up potato flakes inside this little grinder here. Three and a half cups of the brewer's yeast. I got this from Josh's Frogs. Two cups of powdered sugar, which I got this from Walmart. And most of the stuff you can actually pick up from your Walmart, your local grocery store, uh, wherever you want to pick it up. Don't worry about getting the name brand or whatever. Get the cheapest one you can get because trust me, the, the flies, they don't care. Next, cinnamon. We're going to need four tablespoons of cinnamon. We're going to need two and a half tablespoons of paprika. And last but not least, we'll need two and a half tablespoons of methyl paraben. This is basically just a mold inhibitor, so your cultures will last longer, so they won't mold over and be all nasty and your fruit flies will die. Uh, but you got to be careful with how much you add of this to your media. You do not want to add too much. It's, it's a lot better to add less than it is to add more. Alright guys, I want to take a moment real quick just to interrupt the video. Prior to making this media and filming everything. I posted on Facebook. For those of you who make your own fruit fly media, how much methylparaben do you add? I'm adding 2.5 tablespoons to a 18.5 cup mix. Not sure if I should add more methylparaben or not. Or should I add the methylparaben to each culture I make? Thoughts? Travis Stutchman, uh, TCS Dart Frogs, I'm sure you guys know him, seen his website and his YouTube channel. He recommended that you don't add any at all because it's pretty much chemicals that you're feeding to your dart frogs and to use vinegar instead and he's 100% correct. Now I've heard of people using vinegar before in their cultures but I've never really researched it or looked it up. I guess I just went the easy route and, is, and I'm using methylparaben but since I've already mixed up this batch I'm going to go ahead and use this and on my next batch that I make I'm not going to add any methylparaben to it. I'm going to use vinegar per Travis's recommendations. So I just wanted to bring that up to you and let you know so you can kind of make your own decisions from here. A couple optional items you can add are you can add some carotenoids and for this mixture I would add two tablespoons of carotenoids and you can get these from I think it's Renarium uh, Carotenoids Plus. Uh, it's some expensive stuff but it's very beneficial to your flies which are in turn very beneficial to your frogs. The uh, only reason I'm not adding it is because I don't have any. I, I didn't order any in time to, you know, make this stuff. And I actually need some because I need to make some, some more fruit fly cultures right now. Uh, next, you can also add some super greens. You can get that on Amazon. Uh, pretty cheap, probably 10, 12 bucks for a nice tub. And I would add five tablespoons of that. And last is some spirulina. Um, now, you don't want to get the fish spirulina because it has a lot of different additives in there. Get the stuff from Amazon that uh, like it's a lot of people mix up and make spirulina drinks or whatever because it's just pure spirulina. Um, and for this mix, I would do half of a tablespoon. Now you could add more if you want to. It's not necessarily going to harm anything, but it will start making your your media turn a more green color because that spirulina is pretty pretty dense. It's pretty packed. Obviously, you're going to need a cup measuring container and a tablespoon as well as a container to mix your stuff in. Now this looks all nasty and looks like dust, but it's actually for my last batch of my fruit fly media that I made, so there's no need to really wash it out. I don't want to put water in here, have to let it dry, go through all that stuff. It's perfectly fine to use. But yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there. Oh, and as well, you're going to need a blender. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with our mashed potato flakes. Put them in this blender, and we'll go ahead and mash them up to a fine powder consistency. Now you don't have to do this, but I like to do it so my media is more grainy and powdery instead of flaky. And another quick tip when measuring this stuff out, don't blend it, then measure it. You want to measure it first out of the box and put it in there and count your cups. Because once you blend it up, it's going to get a lot finer and you're going to end up with way more cups than you actually want. So for example, I pulled out five cups out of here, put it in here, once I blended it all up, it actually went all the way down to about two and a quarter cups. Okay. 
All right, so I don't know about you, but I would much rather have this fine powder base mix versus these flakes. Again, nothing wrong with it. It's just a personal preference here. Now that we have our potato flakes all mixed up, let's go ahead and add everything else into the mix. We're gonna go ahead and add three and a half cups of brewer's yeast. Next up is two cups of powdered sugar. All right, we got the powdered sugar done. Next up uh, is the cinnamon, and we're gonna add four tablespoons of cinnamon. And the cinnamon is obviously the stuff that makes this fruit fly mix smell pretty good, as well as it prevents mold from forming on your fruit fly cultures. Cinnamon is done. Next up is the paprika. And we're going to need to add two and a half tablespoons of paprika. All right, paprika is done. Last, but certainly not least, we're gonna add the methylparaben and we're going to need to add 2.5 tablespoons of methylparaben. And again, please don't add any more than that to your mix. You can add a little less if you want to, but don't add any more. If you do, it could turn your fly sterile and your fruit fly cultures will never produce. And your mix will basically be pointless unless you add more potato flakes and you know all that good stuff again. But it's just best just to not add too much of this stuff. Alrighty, that's it. Now we just need to take our container, mix everything up very good, and you're done. Since none of us have those industrial electronic like dirt mixing machines that mix up everything, I guess like the professionals have, um, just use a five gallon bucket, seal it up, just roll it on the ground. Kind of see the potato flakes at the very bottom, the yeast and all our extra additives in there. So now I'm going to seal this up and roll it on the ground until it's completely mixed up. Make sure it's very well sealed up because you don't want to get this stuff everywhere. Mix it up. Alright, after mixing it up for about a minute or so, just let it set to get all that dust to settle back into your media. And then open it up and check out what you just made. Look at that. Looks good. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up today's video. If you learned something new today, go ahead and go down and leave a comment and tell me what you learned new today. Hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, as well as that bell that pops up and hit all. That way you'll be notified anytime I upload a video in the future. Appreciate you watching.